I am creating Dawa Graph. Dawagram, the world's first halal social media site. Dawagram allows users to connect with like-minded individuals who share the same faith and values, fostering a supportive online community. Dawagram encourages users to be more mindful of their interactions and content choices. Compared to other social media sites that allow for your eyes to be polluted with haram, Allah mentions in the Quran that on the Day of Judgment, our eyes will intercede for the actions that we perform. So, reflect on the significance of an app like Dawagram on the scale. Dawagram also offers a range of different groups ranging from halal marriage talks to business groups where you can connect with entrepreneurs across the globe. Dawagram isn't just an app, it's a movement. A movement that will continue to grow in tackling the haram in this dunya. We will be waiting for you on the other side. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, negative news today. Hit and run injuring Muslim Stanford student sparks hate crime probe. Due to the current escalation between Israel and Palestine, many people finally wake up to the truth and see the oppression of the Palestinian people. However, because Israel still has the upper hand, those people are labeled anti-Semites. Everybody that is pro-Palestinian is a Nazi, is an anti-Semite, a racist, a hater. This is the unfortunate common narrative for the past seven decades. The world is always teaming up with Israel and they do not care about the Palestinians. They do not care about Muslims. Therefore, you cannot expect that people would even care for Muslims that are victims to hate crimes. Today, I want to shed a light on this. Before we start the video, guys, as always, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy my work. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look we are on the washington post homepage we read hit and run injuring muslim stanford student sparks hate crime probe as authorities announced they had opened a hate crime investigation into a report of a hit and run that injured an arab muslim student at stanford university the student called on people on sunday to collectively denounce hatred bigotry and violence amid rising reports of hate crimes against arabs Jews and Muslims in the United States. A black SUV hit Stanford student Abdul Wahab Omira on the Paolo Alto, California campus before 2 p.m. Friday, according to university officials. The driver of a Toyota 4Runner was reported to have made eye contact with the victim, accelerated towards him and struck him, then shouted, F you and your people, while driving off according to a news advisory from Stanford's Public Safety Department. Omira described the driver as a white man in his mid-twenties, university officials said. On that note, just two hours ago, there was a police sketch released to show more information about the suspect in the Stanford hate crime incident. New images of a suspect accused of running over a Stanford student of Syrian descent last week. This is the sketch. And so this is the alleged suspect that committed the hate crime. Omira was transferred to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, the university said. One of his friends told KTVU, a Fox affiliate in the Bay Area, that Omira had lost some sensation in his left leg. Alhamdulillah, nothing worse happened, but we of course can imagine that this year could have ended deadly. The California Highway Patrol, which responded to the hit and run, said in a statement that its preliminary information and the determination that the incident was a hate crime led the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office to open a hate crime investigation to look further into the incident. The agencies have not announced an arrest or released a suspect's name. They did not immediately respond to requests for comment Monday morning. 
<laughs> I personally am not a big fan of all of those terms and labels, hate crime this, hate crime that. However, in this day and age, in this day and age of liberalism, you unfortunately do have to fight fire with fire. Those are their terms. And those terms have been used to justify Israel's existence. Everybody that went against Israel, politically speaking, commits a hate crime already. You cannot speak against Israel in countries such as Germany, for example. They will label you an anti-Semite and a Nazi and potentially put you in jail. This was the common narrative until now. Due to social media, thank God we see a shift there. And therefore, yet again, even though I do not agree with those terms, I do not agree with the term Islamophobia either. Those terms are so weak. But nevertheless, I do understand why they are being used here to essentially take the mirror and hold it into the oppressor's face so they see that they are exactly doing what they accuse the other side of. Omira, whom friends identified to local media as a Syrian refugee, released a statement Sunday through a students group that has been organizing sit-ins at Stanford to protest Israel's actions in Gaza during the war with Hamas. Even this wording is of course absolutely false. What kind of war does Israel have with Hamas? It is not a war with Hamas. They are cutting electricity, water, food to the Palestinian people, of which half is essentially children. This is not a war against Hamas. It's not a direct battle, Israelis versus Hamas. No, of course not. They are simply decimating, genociding civilian Palestinians. Now we have a quote here, as I lay in my hospital bed, grappling with a reality I had never imagined, I reflect on the importance of spreading love, kindness and compassion in a world that seems to be steady succumbing to hatred and prejudice, Omida said. This ordeal has solidified my resolve to advocate for love, understanding and inclusivity. To me this sounds like a bunch of bigoted, extremist, jihadi hate speech. Omira described the driver as having short, dirty blonde hair and a short beard, and wearing a grey shirt and round framed eyeglasses. The student said the driver had previously shown animosity towards my community. His hateful screams of F you and your people still echoes in my ears as I grapple with the physical and emotional pain this incident has left in its wake, he said. Omira, who is listed on his student profile as an undergraduate computer science major, did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Stanford's leader condemned the incident, saying they were profoundly disturbed to hear this report of potentially hate-based physical violence on our campus. The article continues for multiple pages. If you want to continue reading it, I'm going to list it in the description box below for you. And now I'm going to roll some clips about the incident. I went and visited him in the hospital yesterday. Uh, he, he's in good spirits, but uh, physically uh, he wasn't doing very well. Alright, this is it for today's quick video. Just a reminder that yes, Muslims become victims of so-called hate crimes as well. No, I have to repeat myself here, you are not an anti-Semite if you want freedom for the Palestinian people. And no, wow, big surprise, you're not a terrorist just by being a Muslim. People still believe in this BS narrative and honestly, I cannot blame them. They've been brainwashed, they've been psyoped for decades now. Now, there has been so much Israeli propaganda being pumped out by America itself, spread to the masses. And then, of course, the so-called War on Terror, which was essentially a war on Islam coming from the American side yet again bombing Arab countries and therefore people find themselves completely demoralized, completely brainwashed, not knowing what Islam is. And this is why you see people in their 20s driving over Muslim students because they believe somehow those Muslims pose a threat to them. This is how the Christians have been played against the Muslims. In every single Western country you see the same scenario, be it in America or be it in Germany or be it in France. So-called Christians conservatives partnering up with Israel, partnering up against the Muslims. You see the Christians attacking the Muslims, truly believing that the Muslims are their enemies. It is absolutely hysterical. You really cannot make this up. 
when you talk to so-called conservative Christians or to Christian apologists and you ask them, why are you against Islam? Why are you against Muslims? They will tell you, yeah, well, they're not accepting Jesus as their God. And the Jews do? This is absolutely ridiculous, man. What are you talking about? Please look into it. You are differing theologically minimally. If you look at the Christians, they believe, allegedly, in one God. The Muslims believe in one God as well. However, the Christians do believe that this God has three personas. They believe that Jesus, the Son, the Holy Spirit and the Father are one God with three personas. Yes, it is true. The Muslims do not believe that. They believe that Allah is unique. He is only one uniquely one. That is correct. But nevertheless, at least the Muslims see Jesus Christ as a prophet and love Jesus. Of course, you will say that they do not love Jesus because they do not see him as God. Again, guys, in Islam, Jesus is one of the mightiest messengers. That is it. In Judaism, on the other hand, he is not even a messenger. Quite the opposite. He is seen as a charlatan, as a conman. And according to the Talmud, he is boiling in semen and excrement. This is according to the Talmud. But you see people like David Wood attacking Islam over and over again, mocking Islam because Islam does not accept Jesus as God. How can we trust the Quran? The Quran comes 600 years after Jesus and now I'm going to take this as a source about Jesus. This is your attack on Islam. Hey, you do not need to take the Quran as a source. Take it or leave it. Let the Muslims then be misled in your perspective. Let them believe in a book that came 600 years later after Jesus and in that book it does not say that Jesus is God. Well, it doesn't say that Jesus is God in the Bible either, but that is a different topic. However, if you look into the sources of Judaism, if you look into the Talmud, you will see that your God is being attacked, is being defiled. Why don't you have a problem with that? You, of course, don't because there is a deeper agenda at hand, a deeper agenda that is financing this hateful rhetoric against Islam. But that is all I can say on this platform here, so I'm going to cut it off. However, I want to leave you with some words from Germany, where I grew up. In Germany, we say, wenn sich zwei streiten, dann freut sich der dritte. What that means is, when two are arguing, there is a third one that is happy about it. So I'm going to let you do the interpretation who the two groups are that are fighting each other and who the third group could be that is happy about it. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And check out the links in the description box to further support my work. All right, guys, but this is it. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Ever felt adrift in the digital world seeking connection? Introducing Dowagram, a sanctuary nurturing hearts, minds, and spirits. Crafted for our cherished Ummah, guided by Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him's wisdom, none of you will have faith until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. A haven of unity and resilience amidst modern challenges. Dowagram, your beacon of togetherness. Explore locations, events, courses, and education, all fostering growth. Join us. Let's unite and strengthen our path.